Okay. Declaration. There was a declaration of war signed, drafted, and attested to by a lot of people, but among them were uh, Wilmer Mestis and uh, Daryl Standing Elk, and, and he was at that time living in San Francisco. D Daryl was living in San Francisco and working for the Center of the Spirit, which was a group that was set up to fight against this new ageism or whatever this is called when they take ceremonies and, and misappropriate it and misuse it, meaning they, they charge admission and they charge for everything. And what we were what we were trying to do and we had been doing this for a long time. This is not just because these guys signed this declaration and drafted this thing up in the 1990s. This has been talked about for years by the elders and by a lot of people. <coughs> this is one of the main arguments that was uh, put forth by a lot of people and that was one of the criticisms against people like Crow Dog, for example, that also against others, you know, like Sun Bear and I don't know, all, you know, Fire, Archie Fire Lame Deer and Pete Catches and the Man in the Moon and the dog jumped over the spoon and all that, you know. Because at some point everybody's tried to show these ceremonial ways to people, but some of the people I, that I mentioned may have done more than that. And so there was talk about how to bring that to a, to a conclusion because we were worried about it, it might hurt people. That was our main concern. I mean, I mean, we were also worried about appropriation of our last remaining standard of, of, uh, of our culture, our ceremonies, since the invaders have taken everything else, the land, and, and all of that, and I'm not talking about all that right now. So, eventually what happened was this declaration of war, which said that only certain people are going to be recognized as legitimate carriers of the ceremony meaning they had permission of the people to do these things, sun dances and whatnot. And everybody else had to stop, cease, and desist. So we ended up in Kwasapa, and lo and behold, we caught, you know, a, a red cloud, vernal red cloud, doing ceremonies for profit with some people that were out of, you know, the Twin Cities area. So we confiscated all their stuff, you know, their ceremonial belongings and everything, and we told him to get out of there. And we caught another guy that was trying to sneak in and go up the hill, and then we did go up to the, on the hill, and we brought down a whole bunch of things, and we put it in a blanket that was used for offering, and I, I mean, it was, it was shocking to find out some of the stuff that they had put up there as offerings. You know that, that story of Palo Highway where that guy goes up the hill and puts a candy bar up there? I actually found a candy bar up there. I mean, I don't think it's right for Gary Farmer to go up there and do that in a movie just because it, you know he wants to do a movie, you know, or or the rest of these clowns that are acting like Indians. But that's their business. But it does when you do that on a m movie. Some people take that for serious, so they're going to go to those places and they're going to actually put you know our candy bars up there and money and everything else. But we. We got all of that stuff and we put it in a blanket and we took it down and we showed it to the elders. We got him in the circle and we, I brought that blanket forward with some young warriors there. And we put it out and spread it out and I spread it around and I said, this is what's on our sacred mountain. And the elders went up to that blanket and they looked down and they started crying. The women started crying in that old traditional wail that the Lakota women can do, you know. It was sad. 
and 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 right next to us at, at the, this is in Bear Butte State Park. I mean, they made a park out of made a state park out of a sacred site, as well as amusements up in the, the middle of the Black Hills and all those rip off communities. Um, they had a museum there, so we went over to the museum, and, and inside that museum was, you know, horse hair shirts with traditional quill work that was done, you know, from young men afraid of horses and some of these other people that were really well known, you know, headmen from a long time ago that are Oglala. These are people that are right from Oglala. And so we wanted to tear it down. We wanted to break it up, and, and the, the older, elder people told us not to. So we complied, but we didn't, we were, we, we didn't really like that, the whole idea of walking away from that. At any rate, uh, that declaration was made in 1993, uh, declaring war on all shamanism, new age, pretenders, uh, I mean there was a whole list of people, you know. Native people who go and do this stuff, you know, famous people's fathers, you know, big speakers in the anti, you know, anti this movement, anti that movement, that are native, you know, uh, and some were really well known, you know, like uh, Red, like uh, Westerman and uh, the Duke. I mean, those are just some of the ones that I know about. So, I think it has to be corrected, and that's one of the things that we tried to do then. And so, at this time, you know, we're, we're, our family's going to be a sweat here tonight. We're in South America, by the way. You know, this, is, this sweat's not for sure. I'm, I'm just doing this because I'm, I'm still carrying on the war, regardless of what anybody else is. Uh, and we, uh, this is our first Lakota sweat in South America, and we're opening up to claim our land here in, in, in this part of the hemisphere. Because all of this hemisphere belongs to the first creation. And I'm not just talking about the two legged, I'm talking about all the ones, the four legged, and all the, the all trees. The and all the all the ones that are missing too that got exterminated along with uh, you know, a lot of our two legged the invaders, the Indians showed up from Italy or wherever wherever they come from. And this is also a statement for me to the general public about the movement the general public about in the business, you know. We have some unfinished business from Wounded Knee and from all the trials, and, and that includes take, looking at the whole, all those cases, whether they're, uh, regardless of who it is, but also looking at the ones that actually paid the, the utmost price, you know, Joe Stern, you know, lot, Jim, Jim Little, you know, and, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the Loud Hawks, most of the Loud Hawks which is my family, and a lot of other people, that I can't even mention all the names, and people that paid the price, and while the movement hierarchy, the media selected leaders, and you know who you are, uh, unless you want me to name names, you haven't been doing anything except taking the bow, you know, there's been a lot of people that, this movement is about the people, it's not about individuals. It doesn't matter who founded what, where, and when. It's about the fact that we had to take care of our business with relationship to the land and to um, following what the people call the original instructions. What I, what I call the indigenous framework, but it doesn't matter what you want to call it. And it includes all of the tribes, not just the tribes that we know of in the north. There's like tribes down here that are Mapuche and Tewelchi. It's going to be 10 minutes.